I feel like doing a kit. And given what the calendar says, I think it's only appropriate that I do this little kit here. According to the silk screen on this board, this is an EQ kit HBL22, which is hard to hold on to. Um, so it's got a bunch of LEDs around the outside, one chip in the middle, which is an LM358, which is a dual op amp. Transistor over here, uh, capacitor, a handful of resistors, variable resistor, power switch, DC power input. Looks like a fairly straightforward thing. Let's see if we can find a schematic for this thing just to try and explore what goes on here before we get busy. That was actually fairly easy. I found a two page PDF with a manual for the thing, actually a build manual showing you how to do it in order. It doesn't explain exactly how it works, but that's fine. And realistically, as uh, well laid out as this thing is, I don't think we really need the build manual. This 50 K variable resistance and this 10 K in series with it, uh, are, are involved in the timing circuit as is obviously the capacitor. Um, I'm not going to pretend to figure out what the rest of it is, but regardless, whatever this voltage here is coming from the output of this op amp is going to be controlling the base of this transistor, which will be turning on and turning on and off all the LEDs, uh, a bit of current limiting 22 ohms. So they're going to be between four and six volts. Yeah, they'll be relatively bright, I'm guessing. Okay, there's not much to it. Let's just get at it, shall we? In the bag, we've got a bunch of LEDs. Judging by the dot on the LED bag, I'm gonna guess that those guys are red. Um, and they're diffused LEDs, not uh, the super bright ones, or the uh, super glary ones. There is our transistor. There is our IC, complete with bent pins. Yep, LM358 op amp. Three of that resistor, one each of those three resistors. Okay. So I think I'm gonna try using this soldering holder. I haven't used it for a real kit yet. So where shall we start? I guess we'll start with these three resistors, um, which seem to be the 47 K's because that's the only one that there's three of. I'll just quickly measure them just in case because we have been burned by kits, including the wrong resistors before 46.3 K close enough to 47. I'll just throw these guys in while the soldering irons warming up. Let's put a gentle kink in there. I'm not bending them right over, just, just a little bit so that it holds them in place. It's not critical. I mean, if this was a military spec project, I wouldn't be doing it by hand like this. I'd be using pliers or a component bender or something like that, but this is just me having fun in my basement, right? That's another thing that I'd be doing if this was professional is making sure the bands were all facing the same way. But realistically, e, wait a minute. I do want to make sure that they're all in the right holes though. I get carried away trying to explain what I'm doing and not paying attention to what I'm doing. Okay. There's those three in there. I think I need to anchor one of these movable jaws down a little bit here just to make it a little bit easier. There's that. Now then, solder. I'm going to use this uh, new spool of solder that I got in the mailbag Was that last week um, just to give it a shot. And then I'll get these first resistors soldered in.
this is a little bit lighter gauge solder than I've used before, so I have to sort of judge how much of it to push in to get the join filled in. But it's not too bad, it's melting relatively easily. That's a little bit shy. That looks pretty good, I think. Okay. There's some discussion on Reddit a week or so ago about, oh, you shouldn't snip these after, you should snip them before you solder. Well, again, if you're working for NASA, yeah, maybe. Or NASA contractor or aerospace contractor or something else. This thing's not going to be subject to that kind of abuse and inspection. Realistically, in all the decades that I've been soldering, I've never had a join fail because I've snipped it after I've soldered it. If you care that much, just give it a quick refill afterwards, which should relieve all of the theoretical stresses on it. The next resistor, pick this one up at random. What are you? You are 9.83k. Let's call that 10k, shall we? Do we have a 10k on here? Yes, there's one right above those guys. Let's just do these other two resistors while we've got the, while we've got it here. Twenty-two ohms. That is. The current lending resistor for the LEDs. Where are you? Over there by the transistor. And the order that I'm putting these in, obviously the resistors are, I'm just doing them as I pick them up. But generally, I think most people try to do the components that are least likely to be damaged by heat and handling do those first and also do the ones that are lowest profile if you have to worry about things overlaying other things it's not really an issue on this board but i'm going to leave the leds to second last and the chip to last just because they're the most likely to get damaged if i go all cowboy and rogue so now then what is this resistor i'm going to guess it's the only one that hasn't been populated onto the board that looks like 98.4k, close enough to 100, and yes, it's asking for 100k resistor right there. Okay, quickly solder these three guys down. This solder bends fairly easily when you're not paying attention. That's not bad. Hmm. I'm not right on the pad, that's why. What the hell's going on back there? There it is. Ah, bit of tip cleaning action. That always helps. So how are we done? This guy right here needs a little bit more attention. That's better. Actually, this guy over here, too. There. So you see now that they kind of tent up. Are we all good on all these guys? That one's a little shy, but I'm going to let it go. Give these a trim. Okay, what's next? Capacitor. It is a 47 microfarad 16 volt capacitor, electrolytic, polarized. Uh, negative goes that way towards where the bandy part is. Positive goes to where the positive sign is. And they're usually marked on the body like this one is as negative that side. So there we go.
I wonder. I'm just going to try Clive's soldering method here. I'm not sure if I have the dexterity for it or not. Bit more solder. Hmm. How does that look? Yeah, acceptable. But I lingered on there a lot and that capacitor is actually hot to the touch. It's not ideal. Okay, what do we got left over here? Power switch, let's do that. So it's just a push on, push off power switch. There's no real orientation to it. Oh, that's going to be interesting. I should put a blob of the ever popular blue tacky stuff on there. Sure. You can see how this is a bit, this is a bit of a pain in the ass because you have to pull them apart from each other. Neither end is anchored. I can see that getting tiring fast. And somebody in the comments on the uh, video on this soldering helper actually mentioned that. And, but I'm, you know, I'm just trying it out. As I said, this is the first full kit that I've done with this thing. Um, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, a few weeks ago, I did a video about this little 3D printed soldering helper holder thing. And it's, it's pretty cool in theory anyway. And generally it's not causing me too much grief. This new solder though, it's being a little bit awkward. Maybe I just need to get used to it. It does look a little drier, doesn't it? But I don't think it is. I think that's just the material. It's not quite the same alloy. Those look shorted to you. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's not shorted, but it's ugly as sin. So I think just to make it flow better, I'll put just a little drop of flux in there. Normally I save that stuff for desoldering and I just trust the flux that's on board the solder, but did that make it look any nicer? Why does that look so bad? A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, well that took far more effort than I had intended, but I think I've got some passable solder joints on there now. I don't know what the hell happened. I wonder if maybe the metal of the... Uh, switch just drew the heat away too much anyway let's get back to it I'll put in the variable resistor next and then there's no power connector came with it but it's got one marked on there i'll have to come up with something for that maybe just a couple of header pins and i think i'll probably just put the transistor in now Try not to make the same mistake I've made before. Flat side goes that way. It's indicated on the board that side. Give it a little bit of spacing off the board. This pin's a little bit of a bend. -y. Just enough to sort of hold it. I really do need both hands to pull this thing open, so I'm doing it off camera. It'd be nice if it was a single-handed operation, but so be it. Okay, there's the variable resistor. And I'll get our little transistor in here. Try not to overheat it, because so far it's the most heat sensitive thing that I put in. I mean, it's just a cheap NPN transistor. It's not that heat sensitive. But you don't want to be too abusive just in case. Let's 
it's not like I don't have more kicking around here though. So for the power, I think I'll just toss in a couple of header pins. It's not the most high tech, but it'll do. Where'd they go? Oh, they're there, my power pins. Yet there. Oh, again with a blobby solder. I'm gonna turn my iron up a little bit. Yeah, just that extra 25 degrees seems to have made it a little bit. Easier to deal with these things that suck the heat away. And that's still not ideal, is it? I don't think I like this new solder very much. But that looks like an okay thing. If this was one of the FR2, the sort of more paper and fennel resin based boards I don't think it would tolerate all that heat as much now then what's left just the IC and a whole bunch of LEDs so I guess I'll stuff the LEDs in first this is gonna take a bit of, should I punch these things right down flat to the board yeah that might look better don't need them flapping in the breeze Okay, I'm going to just take my thumb and blitz through these guys, and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, got all those guys stuffed in there. There's even three extras, which is cool. So hopefully I don't destroy any, which I shouldn't. Um, I'm pretty confident I got them all in in the right orientation. So I'll let the soldering begin. call that ready next and last thing to go on is the LM358 which is pretty badly bent in shipping but that's okay nothing a little bit of pliers action won't fix that's pretty good Notch is that end, which means pin one is this guy over here. There is a notch drawn on the board, which is nice. I'll just nudge this guy in, that side's in. Just nudge the pins on that side in. There we go. And then make sure he stays put while I'm soldering this. The generous blue blob. All the pins are right where they're supposed to be, yeah. That was probably way zoomed in in your face, wasn't it? Sorry about that. One there. One there. Pin one, that first pin didn't even take. What the hell? There. Yeah. Let's get that out of the way. This stuff does like to melt when it gets hot. And I don't like having the residue on everything. So another old habit, even though it's probably not that important, Notice I'm going, when I'm soldering, I'm going to opposite corners and as far away from the previous join as I can with each one. And then just take a pause. That again is intended to keep the heat build up to a minimum. Does it matter? I don't know. It doesn't hurt though. And there we are. Just give one last look over. Looking for 
cold joins or horrible joins or shorts. Let me listen. Any screaming in the comments? No? Good to go? All right. Let me just move those leads out of the way. Zoom in just a little bit here. And turn on the power. Wall. Wall. Okay. So it's just a beating heart. So let's crank the uh, crank the variable resistor one way. That slows it down. Crank it the other way. Hmm. It barely gets up the full intensity before it ramps back down again. That's interesting. I think that looks not too bad. Just rearrange this a little bit. So what's it drawing? Six, seven milliamps max. That's not bad. There, that looks pretty good. That's uh, darkened the room down a little bit, and it's uh, just blinking away as it does. I'll turn the lights back on here. Warning! Blinding warning. Well, thanks for coming along for the ride, everybody. I hope you. Uh, Enjoyed seeing this little kit get thrown together and didn't get too much laughter at my uh, at my soldering technique. This is one of the first ones where I haven't actually had to fix anything. It went together first try, which is cool. The only thing I'd suggest if you are doing it is maybe stuff the LEDs one or two at a time, not the whole bunch of them, because that forest of legs was just horrendous to work around. Other than that, it's a neat little kit. And I bet you if you could figure out how to make this into a badge, it would fit in with that theme pretty well too. Anyway, thanks for coming along for the ride. I appreciate it as always. If you got anything to say about this little kit, uh, please join me down in the comments for a discussion. Um, critique of my technique is fine. Bad jokes, stuff like that, whatever. It's, I, I just like hearing from you guys what you think about this stuff. Um, I had fun putting this thing together. Thanks again. I will talk to you later.